Welcome to Mountain News with Josh Hibbert. Good evening, I'm Josh Hibbert and I'd like to take you along an adventure of five mountaineers as they attempt to summit one of California's most elusive peaks. Mount Ritter. The trip begins at Agnew Meadows Trailhead near the town of Mammoth Lakes. Here a team of five mountaineers made their way into the Ansel Adam Wilderness. Seemingly flat at first, the trail eventually crosses the middle fork of the San Joaquin River, gaining an elevation until it eventually reaches Shadow Lake. After a quick swim in the lake, the team continued on along the rocky banks of the wildflower laden stream to the northwest end of Ediza Lake where the base camp for the climb was established. Early the next morning, the team made their way across a large Sierra meadow, crossing many creeks until they reached the steep rock and steep snow fields leading to the Southeast Glacier. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The trip begins with five adventurers at Agnew Meadows Trailhead. Introducing, for the first time, Steve Park, Patrick McCuskey, Steve Curry, Larry Gibson, and Josh Hibbert. Mount Ritter is the highest peak in the Ritter Range. The range lies just west of the Sierra Crest and is characterized by sharp summits formed of metamorphic rock. Because of its unique position off the main Sierra Crest and being situated between the Yosemite High Country and the Silver Divide, Mount Ritter provides a spectacular view from its summit, being the highest peak in a 30-mile radius. The team double knotted their boots and donned their backpacks and were soon on their way to one of the most spectacular approaches in the Sierra Nevada. Once the team reached Shadow Lake, they found the water quite refreshing. I'm too sexy for my love, too sexy for my love, love's going to leave me. Land, New York. 
After drying in the sun, the team pushed forward, breaking trail along the river until they reached Ediza Lake and established their camp for the first night. This portion of the climb displayed more wildflowers than one could possibly imagine. The view from Ediza Lake boasts the striking pinnacles of the minarets as well as silhouettes of Mount Ritter and Mount Banner. Once the team reached Ediza Lake, they set up camp, soaked their feet in the glacier melted waters, and turned in early for a good night's rest. Team leader Josh Hibbard, along with assistant leader Patrick McCuskey, led the team early the next morning from Ediza Lake through the lush High Sierra Meadows and over many streams formed by summer glacier melt. The route soon left the green meadows and steep grassy hillside until it reached first Scree, then Talus, and finally the snow-patched mountainside. Well-planned breaks allowed team members to rehydrate their bodies, consult their maps for accurate and precise route finding, and take pictures to document their adventure. The team followed an alternate passage on the Southeast Glacier route known as the Norman Clyde Variation, which approaches a moderately steep slope heading northwest toward the summit of Mount Ritter. Ice axe and crampons were required as the team climbed a steep snow field which angled upwards and left toward a pole nestled between two of the Ritter pinnacles. Each team member soon reached the top of the coal. Once the team had reassembled, they traversed across a snowy gap in the coal, exiting onto the steepest section of the Southeast Glacier. Once the team reached the center of the Southeast Glacier, they discovered a growing glacial stream. The stream, caused by glacial melt, brought a mixture of cold, clear water, silt, and slush down the middle of the Southeast Glacier. After enjoying the fantastic view, the team refilled their water bottles and continued across the glacier until they reached the base of the rocky chutes heading up toward the summit of Mount Ritter. Once the team reached the steep rock chutes past the landmarks known as the Fingers, they stopped to remove their crampons and cooled off on the glacier, in the most literal sense, mountaineering style. The team pushed on through the rock chute hoping to see the summit sooner rather than later, fearing they would reach their preset turnaround time before reaching the summit. But worrying about reaching the summit was in vain, for the final push past one more patch of snow and a straight stretch of talus brought the team to the top of Mount Ritter at 13,143 feet and the top of the Ritter Range, and as far as the eye can tell, the top of the world. 
I'm Josh Hibbert. We'll see you right back here next time on Mountain News.